I'm Otigu Ogochugwastin, and I'm the archivist with the National Archives of Nigeria, Ibadan. Um, my, my area of interest is automation and digital preservation. And I'll be speaking to you ab about how we are preserving our nation's documentary heritage in bits, putting a step forward. Although it's a tiny step, but I believe it's a, it's a step in the right direction. Um, the importance of, of cultural heritage to a nation, particularly archives, cannot be overemphasized. Archives are inestimable and priceless heritage of the nation. This unique source of information resources form the history and core memories above a nation. If properly preserved, these historical documents of value can assist the nation to formulate some policy, make quick and accurate decision, provide timely for stand facts and primary evidence to fast track legal processes, support scholarly research and academics, and overall help deepen democracy, especially in developing countries such as ours. Therefore, as the APS archival institution in Nigeria, the National Archives of Nigeria continues to make deliberate efforts to salvage and preserve these records of perpetual value for easy accessibility using different preservation techniques and methods over the past six decades. Prior to COVID-19 pandemic, the National Archives of Nigeria do deploy traditional methods of records management and archives administration, which was essentially paper-based in preserving and disseminating information material to its users. Enter COVID-19. COVID-19 pandemic actually was a blessing in these guys for us because it helps us to actually rethink our, our archiving methods and processes um, before COVID-19. All our reference services, our finding aids were purely paper-based. So we, we, nev we had never digitized or automated any, any of our functions. So COVID-19 actually opened our eyes and actually because the National Archives was closed for almost five months or six months, we couldn't attend to anybody. So it actually helped us to actually rethink our archiving methods and actually helped us to embrace automation and digital preservation. Actually, automation and digital preservation will help us to actually um, make uh, what's it called archival functions more sustainable, simplify efforts, save, save, sorry, save time and processes of uh, all this disseminating and preserving our national documentary heritage to both local and foreign users. So how did we set this project, you know, um, started? How did we get it started, rather? Sadly, the tax to come up with a workable framework to implement this project, my team and I adopted the digital preservation management model approach to ensure a robust and inclusive process of the implementing the project. The digital preservation management model is a three-legged approach which clearly outlines three main areas of work, that is technology, organization, and resources for the successful implementation of the automation and digital preservation project. Also, the digital preservation management model helps to identify five stages, five stages of organizational responses to the issue of automation and digital preservation. The five stages are it helps us to acknowledge that digital preservation is local, it's a local concern. So really, we have to approach it locally, although it's also a global standard, but not global standard, but with a best practice standard. Secondly, we had to act. You know, even with the small resources we had, we had to start. We had to start with just two computers, two scanners, AD6 scanners, auto, auto, um, automatic data capture machine scanners. But we had to start because um, really, we can no longer close the archives for, 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 for that long. Um, we have to consolidate, um, consolidate by actually um, trans transmitting the project into a program, although that has not been achieved, but we are on the way to achieve it. Um, also, we have to institutionalize it, institutionalize it in the sense that um, this child preservation unit was formally recognized. Before it, it just used to be a unit under the National Archives of Nigeria, but again, it has been recognized, has been recognized formally by an administrative fiat. And you know, we are collaborating. What I'm doing now is part of collaboration. We are bringing people to actually exchange ideas, exchange knowledge on how to make the project better. Um, 
Apparently, the first, the first leg out of the three legs. Apparently, technology is an integral part of automation and digital preservation. A good understanding of the tangible hardware and intangible software aspect of technology to be adopted will be crucial to the success of this exercise. Considering the scarce resource of the National Archives of Nigeria, a greater consideration was given to open source, open source software to ensure future sustainability of the project. Really, like I said earlier, we had National Archives of Nigeria actually, you know, because of the economic um, issues COVID-19 actually brought to the nation, National Archives of Nigeria actually was cash trapped. So we actually need to look inward. So we actually gave greater consideration to open source software to make sure that the, the, the future of the project is sustainable. So money will not be an issue in the long run. So the software deployed was Atom. The Atom to memory 2.4 version was considered suitable for the repository system. The common information storage and retrieval software package was specifically developed by Artifactual National Council on Archives for long-term archiving. It was developed as an open source web application with an idea to enable standardized and controllable creation of different levels of description of archival collection, holding, sorry, collections, holding all relevant information about the funds. Hence, this software program contains general rules for archival descriptions, regardless of the type It provides as whole and parts through the following basic entity types of their interactions access records, archival description, authority records, and archival institutions. Please visit much there on the link National Archives of Nigeria.org.ng um, for a better insight to work done so far. Um, also, um, the software is PDF software, open source PDF software, and um, check the fixity softwares that are actually deployed for integrity check and encryption purposes. Uh, um, this is the second leg of the three-legged approach. At the organizational level, the management is committed to the success of the project. To so this end, the management is drafting a digital preservation policy framework to ensure legal and regulatory, and regulatory compliance. Um, guys, um, I think at, at, at this juncture, I will actually employ you guys uh, if you have um, any probably draft copy of, you know, to help us in, in, in drafting our digital preservation policy, we would actually love it. Um, all right, the resource, the third leg, the resource aspect of it. Within the scarce capital resource of the National Archives of Nigeria, little equipment we have procured. Like I said earlier, you know, um, National Archives of Nigeria probably procured just two computers, two scanners, a server, a router device, you know, but we understand that it's a local affair. We have to start, just start from somewhere. Um, however, um, you know, alternative source of funding is needed to ensure continuity of this project. Alternative source of funding is really, really needed for us to go far in this project. So um, conclusion, the immediate cost, the immediate focus of this project is to digitize our collective national documentary heritage for digital preservation for as long as necessary. The key focus is on endangered archives that may be lost forever if urgent actions are not taken to salvage them. Amid the funding and human resource shortage crisis faced by the National Archives of Nigeria, over 1,000 endangered archives have been digitized and waiting to be transferred to the digital repository for easy access by users. Lastly, we shall rely greatly on friends of the institution for support, particularly in the equipment and financial support when necessary. The transition project, of course, is, is meant to last for 24 months, but really it supports local international support. Really, um, probably it may not last that much, or maybe it can actually elongate the lifespan of the project. Thank you very much. Questions and comments will be welcome.